The response to terrorism, not only is it happening uh, internationally, but there is there are terrorist acts that happen here in the United States. <clears throat> um, so some of the cognitive objectives would be to understand and establish uh, incident management internally, initially, uh, explain the purposes of the incident um, management system, and I explain um, the recommended methods of dealing with the post-traumatic uh, events and stress. Changes in technology have made weapons of mass destruction more plentiful and portable. Additionally, the, inf the information age has supported <clears throat> un unprotected growth of all areas of knowledge, including the ability to find and utilize information which might be used for terrorist purposes. Because of the increasing frequency and magnitude of these terrorist events is necessary for EMS providers to understand how to respond to a potential terrorist incident. Viral terrorism and weapons of mass destruction is defined, and terrorism is defined as a violent act <clears throat> dangerous to human life, to immediate or cohesive government, or a civilian population of any segment, thereafter, therefore, in furtherance. <clears throat> of political or social objectives. Bioterrorism and weapons of mass destruction are domestic terrorism and generally directed at a government, city, state, or community, it is loosely organized by fragmented and not connected with any in international ties. International terrorism is directed at a government, city, or state, <clears throat> and um, these international boundaries and it's, it's connected to these international ties, <clears throat> maybe religious or political, politically motivated. So these weapons of mass destruction can include um, chemical, biological, radiological, ideological, engineered weapons designed to do the most damage as possible. In 1969, <clears throat> many countries agreed to stop biological weapons uh, research and development the US, Russia, Canada, and the UK led the agreement, but other countries continue to have biological warfare programs and are continuing to use them on the civilian and military populations. In 1970, the US disposed of chemical weapons by sinking ships deep in the Pacific Ocean. Safer disposal of the agents included destruction of thousands of pounds of mustard gas, by incineration of 4,200 tons of nerve agents and chemical neutralization. According to the treaty, the U.S. began to destroy chemical, chemical weapons stockpiles, and in 1990, the U.S. began to destroy stockpile weapons on Johnson Island in the Pacific. The U.S. has destroyed nearly 31,000 metric tons of nerve and mustard agents under the terms of the treaty and continued until 2013 when it was stopped temporarily. Chemical weapons destruction resulted in 2015 with a deadline for completion by 2023. To date, the U.S. denies that it has used chemical weapons in combat. It has, however, used nuclear weapons. It was the first and only time the U.S. developed weapons of mass destruction against another country in wartime. This bombing was of Nagasaki and Hiroshima that killed 140,000 civilians and military personnel were injured with 130,000. During the Gulf War, the Iraqi government admitted it had conducted research into offensive use of anthrax and bioterrorism has, has filled warheads with biological weapons. The Om Shringi Koyo, a religious cult in Japan, intentionally contaminated the Tokyo subway system with a sarin gas in 1995, resulting in 5,500 injured and 12 deaths. In 2001, anthrax led an Laden envelopes were sent via U.S. mail, resulting in 11 cases of an inhalation, inhalational anthrax, five deaths, and 12 cases of sustained anthrax, exposing over 
30,000 people to the spores. Targets of terrorism can be specific target such as location, date, and chosen or chosen for mass effect. Symbolic targets can be national, state, or areas uh, of assembly, such as the White House or the Pentagon, special monuments, business likes, the IRS offices, federal buildings, abortion clinics. Assembly areas are like malls, sporting events, large gatherings, which produce large numbers of potential victims, maybe even musical events too like concerts that happen in Las Vegas. Um, bioterrorism can also have infrastructure facilities like drinking water supplies or electrical facility, petroleum uh, refineries, or even transportation hubs. Also even medical facilities, churches, military ins installations. <clears throat> These events can um, occur on national holidays, or on anniversary dates, or other terrorist events. Just never know when it's going to happen, but always need to be prepared. The weapons of mass destruction response has been blown out of proportion to the extent that many responders are under the impression that incident will create huge numbers of fatalities and destroy infrastructure. This kind of scenario happening is possible, but not probable. The truth is, is that historically low impact, low fatality incidents are more common even in situations where weapons of mass destruction has been deployed. Responding to a hazmat incident with multiple victims will be more likely scenario. CBRNE agents are substances that have the ability to cause injury or death. They are intentionally <clears throat> dispersed with a goal of causing harm. The agents vary widely from the type of effect and their impact will vary for, with each agent. <clears throat> Many of these agents have very similar effects to other chemicals used in the industry. For example, these nerve agents are almost identical to the effects of organophosphates used in agriculture. In 2002, the CDC compiled categories of critical biological agents in the event of a CBRNE disposal. The agents are divided into three categories, A, B, and C. Category A agents are used at the highest category to pose the greatest risk of, to national security. They are spread easily by person to person contact and cause a high and cause a, a high death rate. They will probably cause panic and disruption. They will require special action for public health preparedness. Such agents would be considered um, smallpox, anthrax, the viral hemorrhage fevers, such as Ebola. Category B agents are the second highest category, and they're easy to decimate, causing moderate illness and lower death rate. These agents call for special diagnostic tests and disease surveillance. Q fever, glanders, ricin toxins, typhus fever, E. coli, water safety threats. Q fever is a worldwide disease that is acute to the chronic stages caused by bacterial cococcyl brunet brunetti. Cattle, sheep, or goats are primarily receivers, although the variety of species may be infected. Signs and symptoms would be that high fever, severe headache, general malaise, abdominal pain. It's basically when you're when you're dealing with these and your patients that you come across, what's what's the acronym of sludge stand for? These are a lot of we see a lot of these types of uh, <clears throat> symptoms and come across with these patients from our slug activists. With category C agents, you have your third highest category, yellow fever, tick bone, still all nasty stuff. And there's that sludge, right? So with these chemical nerve agents, you know, um, symptoms can begin within minutes to hours after exposure. Headaches, elevation, chest pain, abdominal pain, wheezing, possible seizures.
atropine, right? You use high doses of the atropine when you're treating for any sludge type of emergencies, chemical nerve agents. So any po um, poisonous gases that were used uh, ex extensively during World War I, and although that they haven't been used as a primary weapon since 1918, um, they are produced in large quantities for the industry. Two um, gases that have the greatest potential for weapon are chlorine and phosphogen. Chlorine is the, in the world of hazardous materials, chlorine is number one on the list for the chemicals that has caused the highest number of deaths from exposure. This is primarily because it's available to both industry and civilians and is used heavily in the home. As a weapon, it is highly effective since it can be lethal in very small quantities. Chlorine is <clears throat> concentrates as low as 1.0 part per million. It is a, it is a yellow greenish liquid that has a distinctive odor. It can be pressurized and condensed from a gas to form a gas. It can be inhaled and absorbed through the skin through even drinking water. Chlorine acts quickly upon contracting the most <clears throat> contracting the, the moist tissue of the lungs from the hydrochloric and hypochlorous acids resulting from chemical burns to the soft tissues of the lungs and the alveoli. Depending on the exposure, this condition can occur within minutes. Symptoms, cough, chest pain, burning sensation uh, to the face, skin or eyes, GI disturbances, dermal, pulmonary edema. All right. <clears throat> Phosphogen is the woodless gas that smells like hay. It is a gas that is heavier than air and spreads quickly. Upon con contacting the moist tissues in the lungs forms hydrochloric acid, but much slower than chloride, resulting in chemical burns and soft tissues of the alveoli. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Depending on the type of exposure, this common condition can occur within minutes. Again, we'll, we'll see we'll some burning, pulmonary edema, heart failure. What would you do? What would be the treatment for this type of burn? Even the animals get affected. Sometimes, you know, you don't have, uh, the anecdote doesn't exist, so you just have to do the best thing that you can. All right, so biological agents represent the agents most likely to create a very large number of victims without a great risk to the terrorist. Many biological agents are communicable in the natural state and that can be mass produced easily. It can be combined with other agents such as to boost the effectiveness and viability. They can be distributed directly <clears throat> without the public's knowledge until the first wave of the victims being developed. This leaves the terrorists a window of opportunity to make their escape. Even crude and inexpensive methods of distribution can be highly effective. There have been many incidents of the, of the use of biological weapons in history, including the intentional poisonings of food, water, or clothing, which has, with agents such as plague or smallpox. There are many agents that can be used for biological weapons. We'll focus on the bacterial and viral agents and the biological toxins. Agents that are classified as category A biological agents are anthrax, mutualism, plague, smallpox. <clears throat> Remember these viral hemorrhagic fevers such as Ebola. These are the worst and easily to manufacture, distribute and have a high death rate. Anthrax is an acute infectious disease caused by B. anthrax. <clears throat> Comes in cutaneous form, inhalation form, and intestinal form. It is not <clears throat> con contagious, symptoms vary. It has lethally 20% once exposed. Treatments with antibiotics may also be supportive. So the plague is caused by bacteria found in rodents, prairie dogs, squirrels. It can be in the system in aerosol causing 
Dramatic form of probability of secondary contamination. Your symptoms would be fever, weakness, GI complications in the next couple of days. Uh, <clears throat> is an infection without treatment and has a high fatality rate. Botulism is a toxin produced <clears throat> by bacteria. Is the most toxic substance known. It is 15,000 times more toxic than the VX nerve agent and 100,000 times more toxic than the serine gas. Most common exposure is through the ingestion of botulism's contaminated food through improper preparation and is more common in the U.S. than in any other country. Exposure inhibits the release of acetylcholine from the columnar ner nerves that control the skeletal and ammonotic nerves leading to the cranial nerve and skeletal muscle paralysis. Symptoms appear <clears throat> from head to toe progression starting with cranial nerve involvement leading to the paralysis and the respiratory muscles. With no treatment, the mortality rate can increase as high as 75%. With the immediate treatment, it drops to less than five. So watch out for the ticks too, they carry things. Smallpox. One case of smallpox is considered a severe public health emergency by the CDC. Um, it's, it's highly contagious, it's fast moving. Uh, it, contag it can be contagious through direct contact, bodily fluids, or through indirect contact, such as clothing or bedding. Um, respiratory transmission is also possible. The incubation period can last anywhere between seven to 18 days. Symptoms include the fever. Um, it's a picture of smallpox. Wow. Viral hemorrhagic fevers. Like I said earlier, I think oh, this is similar to the Ebola viruses. It's a viral hemorrhagic fever attack the vascular system and have a high mortality rate. Here are some of their symptoms. Some of those blood blisters that develop. Nuclear weapons it may be your traditional nuclear or improvised weapon. For potential of a nuclear strike is very low. However, the need for a rescuer safety is of certain high priority. When exposed to radioactive materials, the result can be exposure of the contamination. Exposure is defined as being exposed to radiation that can contact the body. Contamination is defined as having radioactive materials on the body. <clears throat> being exposed does not mean that you are contaminated, most likely in the event in, you will be some type of dirty bomb incident with patients who have injuries consistent with an explosion, including the blunt or penetrating injuries. Those with penetrating injuries will have radioactive contamination through open wounds. These wounds must be decontaminated prior to treatment. Explosive weapons um, incendiary devices those injuries are usually burns and rupture of hollow organs. You have a secondary blast. Injuries are caused by objects thrown from the explosion and include penetrations into the body and blunt trauma from large objects. Tertiary injuries occur when a patient is thrown due to the blast pressure. Regardless of the type of terrorist attack, <clears throat> there are a number of facts to refer to alert you that the possibility is of a terrorist situation is occurring. Unexplained fire or explosion at a mass gathering, unusual smoke or orders, odors, unexplained patterns of illness. Your safety and the safety of all responders is the primary goal. Do not get tunnel vision, you may be the target. Be aware there may be secondary devices or events. Be aware that the victims may be terrorists. Keep in close contact with other team members and rescuers. Isolate the hazardous area if possible. Deny entry 
of extra people um, that do not need to be there and keep your eyes open.